Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and retirement with having. As a part of my business networking groups, I was invited to an event out at a interesting space. I remember going and expecting to do some real networking and to hear some real good speakers. When I first arrived, there was casual informal networking going on with most people dressed appropriately for the time period of day and the place we were there. And that's okay. There was one individual who I felt was dressed sort of rather oddly, very inappropriately in a way, informally in front of the rest of us, but I didn't say much and I didn't go express my interest or my authorization because I presumed falsely that she was not someone to be worried about in terms of a potential strategic alliance or a profit partner. Very soon they started the speaker set and when I heard her start to speak, my whole mind was blown away at her intelligence, her brilliance, if you will, not her outside beauty, but her internal beauty, and I became very interested in what she really did for a living. I was getting a little bored with some of the conversation and some of the speakers as it continued on, and I recognized that I wasn't going to really make any good connections for my life and my family and the fact that I had to provide food on the table, a roof over their heads, and I needed to make that distinction. I politely said my gr social graces and P's and Q's to the hosts and hostess of that event, but as I left, I placed my business card down in front of the woman and said, I'd like to talk to you more. I think she was pleasantly surprised and a bit amused, but she had finished her talk on the stage. And I simply said something like, I really want to talk to you about your business. And I left. Shortly thereafter, I either reached out to her or she reached out to me, I can't remember, and we went to meet at a Panera. I was a little miffed that she brought her husband along because I hadn't anticipated that and it sort of made a two-on-one situation a little awkward for me. I openly told her that a little later or might have told her that right then and they handled it quite well and from then on we sort of became a little inseparable in our conversations online in terms of through texting and phone conversations and whatnot but also offline, we did spend a lot of time together while she was going through a struggle. It was interesting that in the early days of that issue, I started to recognize my love of that girl. And I kept actually uttering that somewhat aloud and sort of surprised because I don't usually have that feeling about someone. And I don't usually mix business with, well, love or pleasure. My interest in her continued to rise as I continued to experience her intelligence and her wit and her wisdom and her amazing gift of gab with people, her social skills, and I really admired her for that. I also remember one time walking through my townhouse kitchen, saying something to myself, muttering something to myself about my feelings that were growing for her, and God said she'll be divorced soon, or something like that. I heard it loudly and clearly, and I was support, sort of surprised by him saying his, her husband will divorce her. And I really just thought, okay, this is amongst some of the times when I've heard the Lord speak to me. And I just kind of put it in my back pocket and didn't say a word. Shortly thereafter, I learned that her husband did in fact do those things. Did in fact file for divorce and did in fact really hurt her soul. And I really became kind of a liaison that she could talk to as she was struggling through living back at home, dealing with her children and other things. This, of course, is somewhat of a private conversation, but it's also a public conversation because there will be so few people allegedly listening to me. But the reality of life is that my life started to turn just like other people's lives started to turn. And the interesting thing about that woman coming into my life that I had made a prayer a few weeks earlier before I met that life form. And I literally had said, Lord, I'm really looking to meet this kind of person for my business, for my life, for my soul. And it was sort of amazing how she came into my life fairly shortly thereafter. And I had a lot of validation and a lot of verification that she was sort of that answer to that prayer. Most men don't get down on their knees today to pray for anything at all. A lot of times people want to say they're Christian, but they rarely talk to God unless they're in some sort of a unique and difficult condition. In my lifetime, I know that the prayers that I have done profoundly with the deepest set of my soul has produced some soulmates and some twin flames and things like that for me. If you don't know what those things are, you can visit any metaphysical shop where they have really good quality education going on and learn about those things. You can also possibly learn about some of that through some intelligent networks online, but that's sort of rare because there's a lot of bullshit online too. 
If you don't know how the world works in God, you certainly can turn the pages of any book from the world on God, particularly the Bible, the Quran, or other things by the Hindi, uh, Sanskrit, and whatnot. But in life, we have moments of time to speak the truth of life, and the truth of life is written very clearly there, so much that it's been passed down from generation to generation, and we still have the work of the Lord. He obviously worked off a trinity, which most people keep in their own relationships if they are someone of faith, and he also had a tribe of 12 that helped continue to profess his faith long after his death. Now, anyone who's been a part of any Sunday school class knows the stories and all the different ways in it that he fed the masses and gave and turned water into wine and it expanded fishes and whatnot. I don't have to be perfect in the retelling of the story because you know what I'm talking about. But when we make a prayer to the Lord and when we give our life up to God, our prayers are often answered. The thing that the Holy Ghost will say to anyone who's totally involved with understanding how that works is, you will receive what you need for the day you'll be provided for today with what you need. Sometimes what we want versus what we need are two different things. The things we want in life are not always handled the same way that the things that we need in life come into our life. What I knew about that situation was that I was put in that situation to be something she needed in her life. What I discovered was that she was something I had wanted in my life. Isn't that interesting how that works? Throughout the course of the relationship, it was pretty steady, pretty uh, prevalent, and it went on for several years. But the reality was, toward the end of that relationship, in her mind, not in mine, God was showing me something very different going on. If we talked the truth of things, I would be giving away secrets of that relationship. And I'm not about to do that on any line or any storybook or any book I've written. I will never do that because that invalidates the relationship between me and the Lord and my prayers, but it also gives the people who try to harm people like me and harm people like her as if it's a film like Roxanne in a way that you understand that would be really hurt. You see, people like to use information to harm people. They like to play the card at them, and I've had that done a million times to me. It's not really a test of me. It's a foolishness of them. I am very keen and a good listener, and I know what to hear, what is real, what is unnatural, because I've been in so many conversations over my lifetime in business networks that I know what's natural and normal in just about any setting. It's true. I am a man of literally 50, so I know what to do. But in life, I have to speak the truth, that my truth is that I love that woman. My truth is that I've asked that woman to marry me, and my truth is that I have the right to speak the truth for me. No one else has the right to speak my truth because they're not me. No one else has the right to plan my life because they're not me. Does this make sense to you or do you allow people to plan your life? The foolishness of people who want to plan their lives or not plan their lives is that they don't plan their lives and their life just occurs. And as a result, they get stuck in a job they don't really want. They get stuck and planted in a relationship that's not really what God planned for them and openly a lot of people just wanna win. There are men that want a trophy wife and don't want her to have any broad mind, any use of her profession, any use of her career skills or talents and whatnot, and that's not me. Even my late spouse, who was fully Japanese, and my late son knew that we had a family, we had a responsibility, and we had a life to build, and they were fully responsible for their part of our life, and they understood that well. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and after the loss of my family, other people decided to attack my life. I don't have to give all the details of that, but I have endured a hell of a lot of shit in five years time from people who just thought they were gonna fuck my life. I'm sorry, but I don't come into your house and tell you how to live. I don't walk into your bedroom and tell you how to fuck your wife, and I apologize for that if any young people are listening, but let's be real. When you start to talk about sexuality in the political spectrum, when you start to talk about someone's genitalia in a stupid way, when you do those things, you are highly inappropriate, incredibly immoral, and God knows it. So let's talk about the truth of life. The truth of life is that God has the right to choose, not only for you, but for other people too. But when you don't listen to the Lord, when you lie to yourself about what God is telling you, you really lie to God. The advantage of a pendulum practice is that you have the right to use the Holy Ghost to listen to, but the Holy Spirit will also abuse you to test your understanding of the Lord. The value of a pendulum within that practice or the value, value of a person who used their rosary beads is the, stri the strictness of nothing. 
the sweetness of nothing, the truth, is what it allows you to do is test the Holy Ghost against what you hear in your head. Because your head could hear you say one thing and your mind might tell you something else. But if you don't check it against a visible force of what is true and what is not true, then you could end up in the wrong relationship based on your mind and what you want to do and based on what you get a satanic force talking about to you in your mind. You see, there are two types of people.